Round of applause, please. How's everyone doing? Um, so my name is Charlie, this is Terry. And uh, our team is working to solve this huge problem within agriculture. And that's that farmers today are quite literally running out of people. And I think when people think of farming, uh, they tend to have this view of heavily mechanized production. And the reality is that 88% of the people that work within agriculture work within fruit, vegetable, and nursery crop production. So all the stuff around the outside of a grocery store, and that production is largely unmechanized. And of course, we, we all know the answer to this problem is robots, but there really are none out there. We have assembled an incredible team devoted to flipping this narrative. Uh, Terry, my CTO, received his PhD in computer vision-based autonomy from Oxford, and I grew up autonomy-obsessed on a working fruit and vegetable farm, got an MBA from Harvard, and then spent five years with Case New Holland, John Deere's largest competitor, working on projects in this space. And as a team, we see a way to automate all of the tedious work taking place within specialty crop production, but to do this, we're taking a stepped or a phased approach, beginning with very data-acquisitive, collaborative robots that help people work more productively today while building the base for more autonomy tomorrow. And to begin, we're starting with a ubiquitous and obvious pain point. So here you can see a, a pretty typical table grape field out in California. Um, things are pretty low tech. We have lots of people in the field um, doing pretty, pretty back-breaking work. Uh, and what we want to do is actually bring robots to the space. And what that means is robots have to be safe. They have to work reliably. Uh, farmers have pretty little patience for anything that doesn't work in the field. Um, so we have to rely on a navigation stack that actually works when we don't have GPS available. And LiDAR for us is actually just too costly. So what we have developed is a device called Burrow. Uh, Burrow is an AGV that, that is designed to work outside. Uh, it'll work in the fields that you can see here. Um, it works alongside pickers um, who are hand harvesting fruit. And it shuttles fruit back and forth. Our navigation stack relies on vision and GPS and prioritizes um, either, depending on which is available. Uh, we train computer vision models, which can learn the difference between a tall weed and a genuine obstacle, which is actually a pretty challenging problem for us. Um, so one thing that we haven't addressed is how would you actually use an, uh, some autonomy like this? Uh, we don't have complex user interfaces or, or uh, control servers. And so what we want is, is to have Borrow to, be, to work out the box. So we've had to develop a patent-pending approach to autonomy, which we call pop-up autonomy. So Borrow can learn a route as it follows a person. Um, and then it's able to leverage the structure of its environment and then expand on that route and traverse it autonomously. And so, well, we have Burrow outside, and pr probably what's best, if, if we want to get a little bit of a better idea of how it works, just come and see us afterwards. We're very happy to give you a demonstration. So we're autonomous today, and uh, Burrow processes about one terabyte of, of data per hour. And what that means is that we're generating this huge trove of data that no one else has. And uh, last year, in partnership with the industry, we put a fleet of 10 of our earlier generation machines through about 3,000 autonomous hours of operation and paid trials. Through that, we discovered an incredibly compelling ROI. One burrow enables a crew of 10 people to harvest 43% more fruit every day, which is a 30-day payback. And now, out of that, seven of the largest U.S. table grape growers who hire a combined 19,000 people and would use one of these for every 10 people in the field have each ordered six packs of our units. So Burrow is how autonomous farming finally begins. Thank you very much. All right, give it up for Burrow. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Bo, co-founder and CTO of Blink AI Technologies. Uh, we're spun out of MIT and Harvard with groundbreaking research published in Nature, and we're supercharged in the way that robots and other camera-based systems see the world. So we all know that cameras are being embedded everywhere, uh, going on all sorts of devices and vehicles, uh, many of these robotic in nature. Um, but uh, almost all these systems are facing a critical problem, which is how well they see, especially in challenging visual environments. Uh, and a big reason is because the imaging sensors that are deployed on these systems are getting smaller and smaller, resulting in less light intake, uh, which is the source of your information, and ultimately that gives you poor quality images. 
And this is not just an aesthetics problem, right? Um, because bad imaging results in bad computer vision. If your system can't see well, then it really can't do anything well. So here's a frame from the onboard video um, of the Uber self-driving car crash uh, fatality in 2018. Um, and you know, even one second before the crash, the pedestrian is nowhere to be seen. Uh, she's right here. Um, and because uh, the cameras couldn't see this person, the object detection system failed, uh, and which is a huge part of uh, the cause behind this crash. So when we think about trying to get our cameras to see better in the dark, the first thing we think about is just capture more light, right? You know, uh, go to larger sensors and lenses. But these are very expensive uh, hardware upgrades that may not even fit onto limited size and weight constrained systems. The other main approach is to capture light over time. Um, this is a strategy employed by modern smartphones uh, to do low light photography. And while they do indeed great, give great photographs, um, it takes several seconds to capture that light. And therefore, it can't be used for real time video where you need frame by frame motion capture, um, which is what you need for real time self navigating robots, drones, and vehicles. So we've been inspired by human visual neuroscience. Um, our brain trains itself how to see uh, and how to interpret these raw, noisy signals that are coming in from our eyes. Um, and this process of perceptual learning is critical to the biological efficiency and the effectiveness uh, you know, that humans have in terms of how well we can see in these challenging conditions. And so we recapitulate this process with artificial neural networks um, that are tuned to each individual camera sensor. And therefore, we're able to achieve instantaneous signal-to-noise ratio boosts of 14 dB. And that means we can take a small image sensor and effectively enlarge it by 25 times all computationally without having to change your imaging hardware, uh, which means that now we can do real-time frame-by-frame enhancement and achieve results like this. So instead of the default video on the left, with the same raw data, uh, we're able to get these results here on the right. And because we can do this left to right enhancement, all your downstream computer vision improves as well. Um, so in this case, we have better object detection uh, because we can now actually see what we're trying to detect. And this is generalizable to other things like scene segmentation, um, uh, you know, uh, death perception, so on and so forth. Um, and you know, our, our product is actually extensible beyond low light. And we can do, uh, you know, uh, cover a wide range of noise and corruption, such as real-time snow removal, and in the future, real-time rain and fog removal as well, uh, to really enable robots and other self-navigating vehicles uh, to navigate the world better. So we found it two years ago, uh, came into stealth mode about nine months ago, uh, starting to get industry traction uh, and, and recognition with awards, and uh, starting pilot programs with various automotive, smartphone, and robotics uh, uh, companies. And you know, we're currently in the middle of our Series A raise, and so we're really looking to partner with anyone who's interested in what we're doing. Uh, we're also looking to hire. Uh, so if any of this excites you, um, I'll be around and looking forward to talking with you. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks so much. Great. Hi everyone, my name is Victor Drophy, CEO and founder of Robotire. Robotire builds robots to change tires and we sell those to service centers. So how many of you have sat at a service center waiting for tires for over an hour? That's a fair number of hands. That happened to me. I sat for three hours and I thought to myself, we use robots to put tires on at the factory, why not the service center? So Robotire was born. The automotive market for repair is massive. We spend about $37 billion on new tires, and that goes through 60,000 service centers. Now, why tires? One, they're consumable. Two, they're forever, and they scale from the tiniest little bot to big rigs. Plus, this market gets better with the adoption of EV. Now, the major problem in this industry is the labor shortage, and the an inability to backfill these jobs. So what we say is we let the robots do the heavy lifting. We take this 60-minute task and now can do a set of four in 10 minutes. This allows shops to 4x their revenue, and then with a fraction of the, their headcount, do the same work and allow shops to run almost 24-7. So how does this work? Uh, basically, the technician will drive the vehicle in. We have an automated lift. The automated lift would pick up the car. A single arm, single wrench will remove all the lug nuts. This is how we handle the variability in lug nuts. And then we have a larger robot 
that will manipulate uh, the tire through the tire changer and bouncer. Two key aspects of my system. One is all my robots are cloud computing. So as I continue to develop the long tail of vehicles, as soon as I finish that development and upload it to the network, all of the robots now can do that vehicle type. The second is how we're using our machine learning with our computer vision software to override robot code. So what happens if I can't see a lug nut? That robot will normally fault. Our vision and our machine learning will tell that robot to continue going to remove that lug nut. And there's also a few other key aspects to that. Uh, like I mentioned, we're starting in with tires with pass-through vehicle market with the one common bolt pattern. So don't think about this from make and model perspective. Think about it from lug nut patterns. So there's three patterns, six shapes, and six sizes. So that first one we're starting with gives us 198 vehicle types. Then from there, we'll move into the commercial vans and the big rigs. Now, my robots will not be able to do brakes, alignments, and suspensions right now. But my vision systems can identify those problems and notify the mechanic that that service needs to be repaired. So currently, we've launched our first pilot garage at Tools. We're currently going through Y Combinator. We're going to deploy eight more systems this year. We already have two systems under contract, and we're in talks with some of the heavy hitters uh, for pilots. We've formed four major partnerships. I'm about ready to add two more to that. Mitsubishi is my robot manufacturer. They're helping out with robots and free software development. Tools is my partner garage. Hunter Engineering is the tire changer and balancers. They've given me access to their system, so I control those systems now. And lastly is Silicon Valley Bank that's helping out with our debt financing. Because we're a hardware company, we have to debt finance. Uh, myself is the CEO. Uh, Will Mapes is my co-founder. Dave is our automotive expert. And then I've built a stellar advisory board. So who's ready to robo and go? Thank you, guys. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Are you guys having a good time here? All right. I know I am. Uh, my name is Rob Carpenter. I am the CEO and founder of Valiant AI. And we have developed a proprietary conversational AI platform. When we started our company three years ago, our massive, audacious goal was to actually build digital employees for physical retail locations. And within about six months of starting the company, we actually had a fully functional proof of concept of the product. Our plan at the time was that we were going to build the hardware, the AI front end interface, and then use the existing third party conversational AI companies for the interaction component of the product. The problem that we ran into, and anybody that's had these experiences before, is that none of the off-the-shelf conversational AI systems are really ready to carry on kind of true entry-level customer service type of conversations. And so as a result, we had to pivot the company, and we started focusing on developing our proprietary conversational AI platform. So really quickly, what this looks like First is speech to text. So we've been developing this product. And early last year, we had kind of our major breakthrough. And we're now running at about 92% accuracy on very noisy drive through audio. For comparison, when we run that same audio through Amazon or Google, currently they're running at 62 and 61% accuracy, respectively. So this is a massive gain in terms of the quality of the speech to text. Second, we've developed our own in-house proprietary natural language processor platform. And this has provided us with a massive amount of opportunity to gain insight into the process. When there are situations where the NLP doesn't work, we can find out why, and we can quickly fix it. Third, we've spent the last now three years building out the logic engine. And this is actually one of the most critical components of a conversational AI platform, because this is truly what has the common sense engine that understands what did the customer request? Do I have that? Can I help them? How do I need to respond? And then finally, the most important thing that we've learned is that the text to speech element is really important. Previously, we had just been running a robotic voice. And when we actually transition to a true human voice, the customer experience improved drastically. Now, there's a lot of companies that are working on this type of technology. So instead of just talking about it, I'll show you guys a real quick demo. Maybe. 
Okay, I guess I will not be showing you guys a real quick demo. Um, but if you do have any questions, we'll be around for the rest of the afternoon. We do have the software running on our laptop, so we'd be happy to demo it for anybody that's interested in conversational AI. So why is a conversational AI company up here at a predominantly robotics conference? Well, conversation is a critical way that we interact with each other, and it's a critical element of, we believe, interacting with robots. Because we've developed the entire platform in-house, we have the ability to embed it directly in edge devices and require no persistent internet connection. So for example, if you guys are developing robots that are going to be in the real world, interacting with customers and with employees, make sure it has the ability to understand the people around them, answer their questions, get out of their way, and help them with what they're doing. So we believe conversational AI can help to humanize robotics. Our platform has been developed in-house. It can run on the edge, and it is fully customizable to any industry that's out there. So that's my presentation. Thank you all very much. Awesome. I appreciate it. Nice work.